Welcome back to Petapixel. It is Chris Nichols here. Today, let me show you seven reasons why you should get a real camera like this over your smartphone. Okay, okay, okay. First off, let me just clarify. I actually do consider smartphones real cameras. We take photos of these all the time and they do a beautiful job. So you can look at this episode as really, you know, a couple ways. Maybe you're looking to get into more serious photography. You've got a smartphone, but you want to move up to a more serious camera and you want to understand the differences, then this is going to be a good video for you. But today we are going to approach this video more from a beginner standpoint. So if this is something that you already know, what you should really do is watch our podcast, which is on all your favorite podcasting apps, or you can watch it on the channel here because we have some episodes where we get super nerdy and you'll really like that. All right, let's get to our first reason why you would choose this over this. I just want to show you the examples of the cameras that we're using here. So first off, this is Jordan's iPhone 13 Pro. We're showing this because it's a full featured smartphone as far as photography goes. And Jordan, by the way, is the guy behind the camera. He's the director. He carries all my heavy uh, he nags me, he doesn't feed me very often, doesn't give out back rubs or anything. Right okay. And then this is a Canon EOS R10, which is just a good example of an affordable APS-C size sensor camera that you could very well move up to from something like this. Now, as I mentioned before, I love taking pictures on smartphones. I do it all the time. And they actually have a lot of good features photographically. But one of my main beefs of all time is just the overall handling and ergonomics of using a smartphone to take pictures. It could be a very frustrating experience. So first off, because of the nature of a phone, they're flat. So it's not a very stable way to hold a camera. You're always holding it at arm's length, of course, so you can see the screen. I know that you can buy things like grips and accessories and stuff like that, but then you're really compromising the handling of it as a phone. So there's no real good solution that we found. As well, you do have a shutter button on the side of the phone. I absolutely recommend using that, taking pictures, because it's a little bit more stable. But no matter what, when you're pressing these things, or certainly when you're touching the screen, you're moving the camera, you're shaking the camera, and then actually does take away from the image quality you can get on a smartphone. Also, touch screens are great. We're absolutely used to them, but sometimes they're not quite responsive or you miss the switch or maybe the, the phone's got water on it or you're wearing gloves. This can all be difficult to use. But here now we have a mirrorless camera and here's where the handling benefits are just huge. I mean, you get a proper grip. You've got control dials that fall right under your fingers. You don't even have to often look at the camera's controls to know what you're changing. Instinctually, you'll get very good at just being able to use it without looking. You've got lots of customizability. That's something that's really lacking on a smartphone. And so as far as a photographic tool, the handling, the ergonomics, the ability to zoom quickly, to change manual controls, to change settings right at your fingertips makes a huge difference when you're trying to get that decisive shot. Now, one of the big reasons why you want to get into a camera like this is because you're looking for more artistic expression. And one of the biggest ways to enhance that is having what we call an EVF or electronic viewfinder. That's your viewfinder here on the camera. Phones don't have that. Now, to be fair, your phone has a very high quality screen on. In fact, much higher quality than the screen on the back of a typical camera. This is designed so that it can raise brightness and exposure in sunny days like we have today so you can see things clearly and compose. But but from an artistic standpoint, this screen tends to be too saturated and too bright to show you what your exposures will actually be, how your photos will actually look after you press the shutter button. So what's great about a camera like this is I have a back screen which I can use. In fact, in a lot of cases, I can even manipulate the angle and directionality. That's a big advantage over a smartphone when I'm trying to shoot. But also, I've got this EVF. And when you bring this up to your eye, first off, it's far more stable. Arms in nice and close, pressed against your face. It really helps to reduce camera shake. Also, this is completely shielded from bright sunlight, so I can easily see my exposure, I can easily see my composition, am I in focus or not in focus, but also this is going to be very accurate to the final result of my image, and that just gives me as an artist a much better idea of what I'm getting and why I'm getting it. Okay, so another reason why I like a camera like this over a smartphone is actually electronic flash. Now, you've probably seen these before. This particular camera has one on top. Hopefully, you can see it there on video, right? It's that bright flash of light. Now, here's the thing. I can have these either built in on a camera like this, or I can get external ones and I can take them off camera. I can change the directionality of them. I can change the look of them, the color of them, how soft they are. Now, I know you're saying, whoa, whoa, Chris, hold on. My smartphone has a flash function in the camera app. Yes, but it's not actually electronic flash. What it is is your flash light. And it flashes for an instant when you take a picture. It doesn't stay continuously on, but it's still very weak. I mean, can you see that light it's on right now? I doubt it. It's because it's weak as. 
I mean, your subject basically has to be right in front of the phone to be illuminated by it. And I can't take this off the phone. I can't change the directionality of it. I can't change the color. I can't use a softbox, all that kind of stuff. It limits me. With electronic flash, I can do things like you know, freeze hummingbirds in the air or freeze action in sports and motion. I can also do shots on bright days like today where my subject's brightly illuminated, but the whole background goes dark and dim. It can be really dramatic. There's just more artistic capability with electronic flash, but you have to have a proper camera. It won't sync with your smartphone properly. Okay, our next big reason, it comes down to lenses. Now, modern smartphones, especially the professional versions, nowadays do give you multiple lenses in front of multiple sensors, and that is a really nice thing to have, but it's still quite limited. So first off, generally with a smartphone, you're gonna have a really ultra-wide angle lens that covers a whole bunch, you get all the story. Then you get a general purpose wide angle lens. This is your main camera. This is what you use for most of your selfies, your group shots, that kind of thing. And then you'll have a telephoto lens, but it's not a very telescopic lens. It's really more suited for portraits of people. The other thing with this is that each of these lenses has different image quality. You're not getting the same image quality with each lens. And for the telephoto in particular, you often get your worst image quality using this longer lens. When we take a look at a manual camera like this, one of the main advantages is that we can take the lenses off and interchange them. We can get different lenses for the different kinds of photography that we want to do. I can get all of the basic lenses that a smartphone has. I can get ultra wides. I can get wide angle normal lenses. I can get portrait telephotos, but I can go way beyond that. I can get advanced microscopic close-up lenses. I can get fisheye lenses. I can get telephoto lenses that go way beyond the telephoto lens on my smartphone. A camera like this has lenses that go way beyond what a smartphone can accomplish. The other nice thing is, no matter what lens I put on here, it's always the same high quality image sensor. I'm getting the same photos. I don't have to worry about a smartphone with every lens having a different quality to the images. Okay, so having just talked about lenses, the next reason I wanna talk about is shallow depth of field. This has a relationship with the lenses that you can buy. So without getting too technical, shallow depth of field shots are a very popular picture where your subject is in focus, but you can then have the rest of the scene going into varying stages of blur, sometimes very blurry and out of focus, or sometimes just a subtle difference from your subject to the background and foreground. And this is something you can really do creatively with a manual camera like this. I can get different lenses that give me a big range of apertures, and by changing those apertures, I control how much of that relationship between my subject and the foreground and background occurs. Now with a smartphone, I don't have as many aperture choices. And what it will do instead is a digital effect. So for example, my smartphone has a portrait mode and I can use this to take a picture of an object or a person. When I use portrait mode, because all the photos you take with a smartphone are largely almost entirely in focus, the smartphone then digitally blurs the background. It has to try to sense what your subject is, cut it out, and then blur the rest. The problem is, although this does look fairly convincing, you can often see where the subject's hair doesn't quite match to the background, or there's a strange halo around them. Whereas a camera like this, if I'm using the right lenses, as you can see here in our example, I can get that naturally and organically without any strange digital effects. All right, our next topic is a big one. We are gonna talk about image quality, and honestly, we're gonna keep this non-technical because there's so much going on in the background and so much that we could unpack, but we wanna keep things simple. I'm not gonna lie, smartphones take beautiful photos. They really do. And they take beautiful photos with minimal input from the user. And I think that's why they're so popular. I mean, if you just want to get nice pictures, smartphones do a great job. Also consider how that you're going to display these images. We're not printing them out big. We're putting them on things like web pages and Instagram and some of that. And any issues the photos do have as far as image quality goes, you're not really going to see in those methods of display. Smartphones also do a really cool thing. They have very small sensors, which absolutely take worse photos than the bigger sensors that we find in our cameras, but they overcome this largely by taking multiple photos. When you press the shutter, it takes a myriad of pictures and it compiles them together and it can take the best parts of each of those photos. If one's blurry, it throws it away. If one's got worse image quality than another, as far as things like low light performance goes, it can utilize the good frames. I mean, it does a lot of this stuff in the background, but it really overcomes a lot of the issues with smartphone image quality. There are modern smartphones coming out that get very close to the low light image quality of bigger cameras. They get very close or even surpass the megapixel count of bigger cameras. And so really the only thing I would say about it is 
it's largely dependent on being able to compile as many of those images as possible. And that does mean that the phone has to basically stay as steady as possible. Where this becomes an issue is if you're trying to do, again, fast action, sports, and wildlife. If you're moving the phone, trying to follow something, it cannot compile all of those images properly, and you will have a subsequent hidden image quality. If I was gonna take a look at a camera like this, just with a general purpose kit lens, something with a smaller APS-C sensor, I don't think you're gonna notice much of an image quality difference between these two, even after editing everything in post. But a camera like this, I can get larger censored versions of it, or I can get brighter lenses, different kinds of lenses. And now, if I do wanna have full control and go through the whole process, I will get better image quality on a camera like this. In the end, it really comes down to, do you want that level of control? Do you need that extra image quality? If you're the kind of person who just wants to take casual photos, get nice results right out of the camera, have the filters applied for you already and all the work done, well, you're probably not watching this video anyways. Now, our final and arguably most important reason why you'd want to upgrade from your smartphone is because you're infatuated with taking the best selfies possible, okay? I mean, we take smartphone selfies all the time, but the fact of the matter is all the good rear-facing cameras here, you can't take selfies with them and still compose your image. I have to use the front-facing camera here to see myself, but it is the worst camera that your phone utilizes. Ah, there we go. Now, there are folding phones that you can get and they are starting to change this, but that's still few and far between. But now look, I get myself a modern mirrorless camera like this, something with a fully articulating LCD panel so I can see myself even when I'm pointing the camera at me. I can put this into self timer mode. Look at that, hold it at arm's length. Beautiful, high quality selfie with the very good sensor that I have in these cameras. That's gotta be the main reason to buy one of these, right? All right, I sincerely hope you found that useful and it helps you decide whether you should go with one of these or maybe move up to one of these. Definitely let us know if you have any questions in the comments below or if you'd like to see something like, I don't know, what smartphones do better than these cameras. That might be an interesting video. Let us know what your thoughts are. Please do subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Give us a like. Check us out on our social media as well. And as I mentioned before, do check out that podcast too. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you soon with more episodes. Yeah.